woman in a white burqa in the distance with her child. Um, and I got the Jeep to stop and I quietly went up behind the woman and took a couple of pictures and we drove off. She never knew I'd, I'd taken the picture. Um, but I, I just, in, in, the, in, the, in the distance I could see this figure and it just was so alone and yet so beautiful. Um, and this is the burqa under Ahmed Shah Massoud. Yes, and, and I say in the, in the caption that you know, the burqa had long been traditional for women in Afghanistan before the arrival of the Taliban. I think the West was being fed this line that the Taliban invented the burqa. Well, we know that's we know not the case. How, how do you uh, feel when you see Afghanistan being portrayed in the media these days? Is it with a frustration or...? I think the focus is, I, you can understand and to some extent the focus is all about our, our boys, our troops and you know, our fight. And I, I find that, um, I, I would never take that, that approach. I, I mean, when 27 civilians were killed just the other day, mm -hmm. it really was uh, BBC correspondents saying, um, oh, I'm afraid it's not a good day for NATO rather than the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. and, and your book concentrates very heavily on the people, I suppose, is what... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose I, I like to raise questions rather than try and provide answers. I, I'm not saying that I know what's happening in Afghanistan. I'm not saying that, you know, I got the answers. Um, I go there to record and if I see something that, that disturbs me, I'll take a picture and I hope it provokes some kind of response. Um, I, we shouldn't be taking sides. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be seeing it as you know, yeah. good or bad for one side or the other. I think that's, that's not the role of a reporter. You chronicle the life of one family, um, and I know that uh, this is the father and son taken on the rooftops of yes. overlooking Kabul. Yes, I'd met them in 94 on my first trip, and I spent a night with the family. They lived in the front line in the old city, and it was extraordinary. The picture before that actually is, is the whole family. There's, um, one boy's already been killed in fighting, the mother's already died of an illness, and one of the boys has lost a leg. So Fighting the Taliban? No, it, it was actually fighting the, the Soviets. Uh, it was a couple of years before that. So they'd already seen tragedy, and I, in 94 I stayed with them. And then in 96 I came, I came back, and two of the boys had been killed fighting against the Taliban. And I photographed them on the roof of the building. It was a little bit tricky because the Taliban were on the streets below. They didn't want foreigners associating with the local people. and. You know, I didn't want to put these people in danger, so I took a quick picture and we left. I went to the same spot in 2007 and photographed the two boys. Now the father's dead. And you can see the difference in the background. The minaret is the key. It's the same mm -hmm. place. Uh, but you can see there's a bustling, typical Kabul scene with traders. Thank you for sharing uh, a snapshot uh, with us. And uh, you can get the book online. You can. Yes. Thank, Thank you. About Afghanistan. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Well, from one book to another, actually, uh, many chapters uh, in this book, lots of reading, to be precise. Yes, some um, London school children are embarking on a novel way of breaking a world record previously set by pupils in Dubai. And here to tell us exactly how they're going to do it is organiser Rahul Tarafter. The Big Read, World Book Day, let's bring the record to London. Well, Rahul, thank you for uh, coming on HMS President. Uh, what's the story? Uh, okay, um, it's called The Big Read. Um, we're looking to break the world record for the most amount of children reading with adults. Um, so it's organised, if he's one of the partners, um, along with Muslim Aid, with Islamic Forum Europe and the East London Mosque. So it's a, a partnership event that was being organised. We've got over 3,000 children already registered for the record and we hope to um, bring that record to what London. What are the books you're going to read? It's going to be one book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, we've got actually one of the guys who worked on the film who's going to be one of the readers. He actually produced the, um, the special effects and the chocolate. Um, so he, he'll be there as one of the guest readers. As Are the celebrities. Oompa Loompas going to be there? We, we've asked um, people if they want to dress up as Oompa Loompas, you know, um, come down and have a bit of fun and dress up as Willy Wonka or Charlie or, um, yeah, one of the Oompa Loompas. <laughs> so your organisation, if, uh, it's set a, a few world records now, hasn't it? Yeah, previously, we've broken the world record for the most um, um, amount of people running 100 metres in 12 hours. It was called Gaza 100 and it was to raise money for Save the Children and their work in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And any other records? Um, not a record as such. The last big event that we did was called Iftar 10,000. We was feeding 10,000 people in 10 countries around the world. 
And um, as part of that, we did the big iftar in Al Tabali Park in East London, where we fed a thousand homeless people. Um, not everybody was homeless, uh, homeless people with people from the community. So it was quite a, um, a fun event where everyone was very hungry <laughs> by I, the time. I iftar remember came. that one. Um, how do you choose which uh, readers that uh, are going to take part in the big read? I mean, anyone can be a reader. Anyone under 18 qualifies as a child for the record. We've invited um, lots of different celebrities. We've got um, Victoria Britain, Hedy Epstein, an 85-year-old Holocaust survivor. We've got Assad Ahmed from the BBC. We've got quite a few guys from The Apprentice, the BBC show The Apprentice, um, Trey Azam, Saeed, Majid, um, Ghazal. We've got lots of authors taking part, lots of teachers. So it's a real community event. We've and got how did you choose Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Well, I actually um, chose Fantastic Mr. Fox, but I was outvoted. <laughs> um, we just thought we'd choose a very mainstream book. We'd like people to come to East London Mosque, where the, the venue for the event, and just see um, a, a fantastic event taking place um, in a mosque. So in order to encourage the most widespread participation, we thought, let's choose a very mainstream well, with, book. Well, with Cadbury's, uh, I thought there might be some political aspect of that. Oh, right. But East London is going to be uh, the focus of world attention, of course, in 2012 for the Olympics. Yeah. Have you got any uh, promotions planned for that? We have got one in the pipeline where we're thinking about creating the world's largest logo. Um, at the moment, it's held in Portugal, I think, about 36,000 36, people or something like that. So Not the awful <laughs> British Olympics logo. Well, we haven't thought of which logo we'll do, but um, it's something in the pipeline that we've been speaking to a few sporting organisations, and if we could get a football stadium or something like that, we might try and you know, bring that type of record to East London. Well, not